Hey, welcome to my shop. Today, what I'm going to be doing is making an open segment with a crisscross pattern in it. It's a quite a popular pattern. And here's what I'm going to be making. There's 24 segments per ring. And I made half inch high segments to keep it from getting too tall. And it's 16 open segments tall. Of course, it's got the bottom and the top, too. And I've got the pattern drawn out for it that I've used before. And the pattern's actually drawn out to use five woods. As you can see here, the pattern uses one wood, two woods, three woods, then four woods, and five woods. But I'm actually going to be using seven woods today. I'm going to be using maple, red heart, angam pedra, sapelli, avidar, and peruvian walnut for it. So, uh, Let's get started with this little project, shall we? Boy, it's hot here today in North Carolina. I had to turn the air conditioner off while I'm taping this. So, I don't know how long I can do this. Let's see if I can explain how I'm going to make this turning. First of all, I made a rough drawing of what I want. I never make real accurate drawings. I always make rough drawings. And this is what I'm going to do. It's only half of from the middle out. I got the base and then I got the segments drawn in. I'm going up probably 16, 17, and maybe 18 segments. I'm not sure. Like I said, just a rough drawing. I'll watch it as I go. So I'm going to be using this. And this segment here is the largest segment. So I'm just ripping wood off the sides of boards to get this measurement. And if it's too long for the others, I don't worry about it. I'll just go ahead and use it. No need trying to size each one. Just one size fits all. And now the pattern, the pattern's what's going to be hard to explain. This is the pattern I've got drawn out. Now I've used this pattern before and I'll be using it again. It's a crisscross pattern. It's 24 segments per ring. It repeats every six segments. I've got 12 drawn in just so I can get a good visual on it. It also repeats every 12th ring. I got 13 rings drawn in, but the top ring's exactly the same as the bottom ring. So you can go up however many you want. I made one turning, it was 48 rings tall. It looked pretty good. Normally it's made from five woods. The base wood here, which I'm using maple, and then one row of a ribbon coming up and then the other row of ribbon coming up made out of two woods but for this one what I'm going to do and I'm going to try this I don't know how it's going to work is use seven woods instead of using two woods for this I'll use one two three woods and the same for this one two three different woods I'm going to have to watch it real carefully not to get confused so I hope you can understand what I'm doing there it's 24 segments open segments, which means I need an index wheel of 48 indexes. This is the wheel I'm going to be using. It's got 48 indexes, half of them marked in red and half of them are marked in blue. So the first ring I'll put on will be with the red indexes, the second ring with the blue indexes, etc. Now, if you don't have an any index system, I have made a video on how to build an index system, build these 
index rings and the whole system itself which isn't that hard to do I know it looks a little bit crude but they work out real accurately after all this ain't a rocket motor so if you need an index wheel watch my video on making an index wheel I'm going to be putting it on a floating bottom this is the floating bottom I'm going to be using it's 24 segments it's got the floating bottom in it it's mounted on a face plate with brown paper now again if you don't know what a floating bottom is or you don't know how to make one I did a video just on floating bottoms so you can watch the video and learn how to make a floating bottom if you so desire now the woods I'm going to be using for this I'm going to make the strings one ribbon out of these woods which is red heart this is anglin pedra this is Bacote. I'll be making the base out of maple and I'll make the other string out of these which is Peruvian walnut, avadar and sapelli so I'm going to get started by cutting the first row of segments the first row of segments the base is three and a quarter inches from center or six and a half half diameter so the first segment out is about three and three quarter inches which is going to be six six and a half no, it's going to be seven and a half inches. So I'm going to have to make it make the first row of segments is seven and a half inches. Seven and a half inches, 24 segments at 70 percent. It's going to come out to 0 0.7507. That's the distance I'm going to be cutting them. I ripped wood right off the edges of the board. Just a little bit better than a half inch. That way I can sand them back to a half inch later so they'll all be the same. And as far as the width is concerned, they're all just almost an inch, a little over seven eighths, which is bigger than the biggest one I need here. Sit there like that. It's big enough so I don't have to worry. So I can use it for all the rest of them. Bigger don't bother me. Smaller, I can't use it, but bigger, that's fine, just more wood to cut away. So I'm just going to rip them off the edge. No use even trying to size them down, just waste wood that way. I'll cut it off anyway. So that's what I'm going to do, is just rip them off the edge of the board. Just a little bit better than half inch. I got, them, I got a stick of each one right now ripped off. I got two sticks of the maple because it was smaller. So I'm going to have to go ahead and cut segments for the first ring. I've got 24 segments cut now. I've got 12 of the maple and 4 of each of the 3 woods for the first ribbon. Now these are awfully small segments. And what I'm going to do now, you can see the size of these segments. I'm going in, I got a sponge loaded with shellac, and I'm going to shellac the cut sides. This way, when, by shellac and the cut sides, after the turning's finished, I won't have to go in each little hole and put finish. If I don't, the color won't be right, because the shellac will darken it up. So I'm going to go ahead 
This is my sponge pad. And what I do is just sponge each cut side. And the pad's a little dry now. Put some shellac on it. Shellac outside. Shellac outside. So you can see I have shellac both the cut sides. But by doing this, I get shellac on what's going to be the blue surface sides. After I get them all shellac, I'll show you how I solve that problem. But I'm going to go ahead and shellac all 24 of them now. I've got 24 segments shellac on the cut sides. But now, I've got shellac on what's going to be the glue sides, and they're not even got a good glue surface on them. So what I'm going to do, if you remember, I said I cut them thicker than the half inch I want. I have got on my disc sander a sled. I've got a push stick here with an adjustable stop. And I've got it set so that it's one half inch to the disc so that I can sand something down to one half inch with it. So what I'm going to do is take each segment, put it on, and just clean up one side, just touch it till it's clean. Then I'm going to flip it over and sand the other side down to the stop, which will make it one half an inch. And I'm going to do that to all 24 of them. So let me go ahead and get one done. First I'm just going to touch one side to clean it. Now, uh, just that quick, I've got a good glue surface on both sides, and it's sanded down now to a half inch. So I'm going to have to sand all 24 of them down now. Friday, when I cut uh, some open segments, I run into a problem. I cut these segments for the turning. When I glued two on, I realized that they weren't the right size at all. So, uh, I spent the weekend, I wasn't home most of the weekend, but I spent some time figuring out what went wrong. I'd been using my old cheat sheet for a couple of years. The problem with it is, is I made it for myself and only I could understand it. And somebody volunteered to redo it so it would be understandable to other people and just transfer the numbers. And that's what we did and put it in PDF format. And Friday I decided to use the new cheat sheet. And like I said, the numbers didn't come out right at all. So I did a little investigation and from what I can tell, it looks like the solid ring numbers are correct, but the open segments were not. I don't know what happened, how they got transferred wrong, but they did. So we made up, we redid the open segments on it, and I hope they're correct now. Unfortunately, and this is embarrassing, I sent some of them out by email, and if I happen to send you one, 
And I didn't send you an update. I tried to find everybody I sent them to and send them an update. But if I didn't send you an update, please give me an email and I will definitely send you an update. Like I said, this is embarrassing. So I'm going to use this new revised one and cut 24 more segments today and see how they turn out. Uh, like I said, let me see here. I believe I was looking for seven and a half inch. Yes, this is seven and a half inch I want. And it's 24 open segments at seven and a half inch. The new, new number I come up with now is 0 0.6912. So I'm going to cut segments to 0.6912 and we're going to see how that works out. And I have more confidence this time. I hope it comes out right. We'll see. I've got 24 cut now. Shellac, sanded, ready to go. Line them up according to the sequence I'm going to glue them on. Now here's one of the ones I cut Friday. Here's one of the ones I cut today. You can see there's quite a bit of difference. So I think the ones I cut today is going to come out right. So I'm going to go over to the lathe and start gluing them on. I got all of them sounded down now. Didn't take very long. And I lined them up according to the sequence I'm going to be gluing them on. I got four repetitions, all the same. Now I'll double check the pattern before I glue them on, make sure that I got them right. And in order to glue them on now, they got to be precisely positioned on the base the floating base for this one of course the next one will be on the ring to do that i use a gluing platform this is the gluing platform i use it sits on the lathe so that the center of the lathe is right here and it extends out i put them on here to glue them and this is right at the center of the spindle. I've got a stop block so I can set the distance from the center. I've got a mark right here, a scratch mark, right here where the exact center is. So I'm going to set the stop block. In this case, I want seven and a half inch ring, so that means three and three quarters from the center. So I'm going to set up the stop block for three and three quarters from the very center. Then I'm going to put this on the lathe and glue them up. I'll show you that when I get it all set up. I have got the index wheel lined up and tightened down and set on a red index. Like I said, lined up so that the first segment I glue on will fall right over the top of the seam of two of the segments on the closed ring. In other words, it's going to cover the seam. I got the stop block set. So now all I have to do is start gluing them on. Like I said before, a very thin coat of glue. Don't take much to hold them on. If I get a thin enough coat, then I don't have enough squeeze out to worry about. If you get a lot of squeeze out, you got to clean it up. But with a, just a minimal amount of squeeze up, I never clean them up and nobody ever notices. So this is a thin coat of glue ready to glue it on. I'm going to hold it on for 15 seconds. That's it.
15 seconds. Move it out of the way. Reset the next index. Get the next piece to glue on. Now when I glue on this one, I'll, t I'll be able to tell if they're the right size or not. Way too much glue. Okay, I've got two glued on. If I hold another one on top, they look pretty good. Look about right. So I'm going to assume that these numbers are right now. So I'm going to go ahead and glue all 24 of them on. It's been 15 minutes since I glued the first row on. So I can go ahead now chalk them and sand them. Just a wee bit more. That's got them. I'm going to flip it over and hit it with a fine sandpaper one time. Okay, I'm ready. This is ready to, for the second ring to be put on. The first ring is on. So I'm going to cut and put the second ring on. Now if I look at the pattern, the first ring only used four of the seven woods. The last three woods start coming in on the second ring, then on the third ring, and then on the fourth ring. So on the second ring, I'm going to start introducing a new wood here on the pattern. So I'm going to have to follow the pattern real carefully. And for this ring, I'm going to need 8 maple instead of 12. And I'm going to need four of each of the first woods for the ribbon and I'm going to introduce one more ribbon which will require four and let me see 
what the diameter is going to be on that. Calls for a diameter of just 8 inches. So 8 inch diameter. Four open segments. I'm going to cut it for 0 0.7372. I've got the second row of segments cut, shellac, sanded, got them lined up the way I want to glue them on according to the pattern. Check that. I double checked that. Then I checked it again. So now I'm going to set up the index wheel and the start point to glue them on and we'll start gluing them on. I got the stop block set at 4 inches from center for 8 inch ring. I've got the index wheel on the blue indexes and I've got it set for the correct start point for the sequence I want to glue them on. I've checked that and double checked that too. So now, let's glue one on. And we don't have much glue surface now. So again, a very light coat of glue. Very, very light coat of glue. Fifteen seconds is all I'm going to hold it. index and get another one same thing very light coat and 15 seconds good. A lot of gap between them. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and glue on the rest of them on this ring. It's been a good 15 minutes since I glued the last one on. I've chopped them. I'm going to sand these flat. Then what I'm going to do is start turning the inside, the bottom, into the first ring. After I do that, then I'm going to go ahead, make the third ring and put it on. I'll turn the first, first ring into the second after that. And I'll make the fourth ring and put it on. And I'll turn again a little bit. And then after that, I'll start sanding the bottom. And I'll be working my way out. So first thing I'm going to do is sand these flat. Now I'm 
I'm going to start turning the bottom just into the first ring. Okay. got the bottom turned into the first ring. I'm going to do now is go ahead and make the third ring and put it on, turn the first ring into the second, and I'm going to make the fourth ring and put it on. Making the rings is just repetitive of what I've done before. Measure them, cut them, select the edges, sand them, and glue them on. So I'm not going to show all that repetitive work. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. The fourth ring is on, and I've got it turned up into the third ring. So the bottom and the first ring are pretty much finished turning on the inside. Now, sanding the inside of an open segment is not the easiest thing in the world. So I'm going to start sanding the bottom and the first ring now. It's a lot easier to do it now than it is to wait until it's finished. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through all the grits and just sand it out. There's no need showing sanding all of them. After I've done that, I've already flattened the top of this ring. I'm going to go ahead and cut the fifth ring, put it on. I'm going to cut the sixth and just repetitive. Turn a little, sand a little, cut, add rings. So I'm just going to go ahead and work on it some more and work my way out. got 11 rings on now and then I just got done turning the inside so so it's looking good so far and I've still got six more rings to go I'm getting ready to put on number 12 now but I just thought I'd give a quick shot here of how we're doing so far just a few more rings and I'll be I'll have all the open segments on all the open segments have been put on, 16 rings of them. The end has been flattened, sanded flat. It's been turned up to the second ring down. Second ring down has been just started to turn. It's been sanded up to about the third ring down or fourth ring down. So now I need to put the solid ring over the top. When I do that, then I can finish turning the inside and sanding it and put finish on it. So what I need to do right now is to make the solid ring to put over the top. Make a solid ring for the top. I'm going to use maple. It's going to be 7 inch. 7 inch, 24 segments, going to be 0.9215 cut length. So I set my saw up for 0.9215. I'm 
I set my cut angle up for 7.5 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and cut 24 segments to make the ring. I've got 24 segments cut. Got them lightly sanded on the cut edges. I'm, got them, I'm going to dry clamp them and check the ring, check it for the fit, make sure there are no gaps. I'll hold it up to the light and check it for gaps. If there is a gap, I will adjust the angle on one segment. If you want to know more about making a basic segmented ring, I did a video on it, three ways to make a ring. Also, if you want to know more about my clamp I use, which I come up with, I did a video on how to build and use this clamp, which I believe is a lot better and easier than bang clamps. Okay, so I got 24 segments. I have no gaps this time. Check the diameter. It's right at 7 inches. So, I feel I'm ready to go ahead and glue it up, which is what I'm going to Hey, let's go ahead and glue it up. Put the glue on one side of the segment. That's it. Last piece I put glue on both sides because I got to slide it in. Yeah, there we go. Get this out of the way. My fingers. Let's clamp it up. Get a little of the glue wiped up. Let's flatten this one out. Clamp her down some more. Get her down tight. That should be tight enough. Let it sit for just a second or two. 
should be able to pull it off now. With another quick check. I'll let it dry for 15 minutes and I'll be ready to flatten it. It's been 15 minutes. In fact, is it's been a little more. I'm going to put this through the drum sander. Now, the drum sander has 100 grit paper on it. And the last pass I will take a very, very light cut at a slow speed so I can get a good flat surface. So I'm going to go ahead and run it through the drum. I run it through the drum sounder. Like I said, the last pass was a really light cut at a low speed. And you can see that it is flat. So it's pretty flat, but I want a really good glue joint between this and every one of the open segments. So what I'm going to do now, just to show you, is put this in cold jaws, I'm going to chalk it, and I'm going to hit it lightly with a sanding board and show you just how flat it is. I've got it cold, got it in cold jaws. I've got it chopped. I'm going to hit it with a sanding board lightly one time. Just real light one time. And you can see where it's been sanding and where there's still some chalk. So it ain't quite as flat as I really want it for this. I'm going to hit it again. I sanded it some more. And you can still see some spots of chalk. Right in here there's a lot of chalk. In here there's bits of chalk. So I'm going to sand it on down just a little more until all the chalk is gone. chalk is gone and it is super flat which is what I want for this I want every open segment to make a good glue joint I'm going to hit it with a smooth side one time just for a second okay now I'm happy I'm going to put the cold jaws in the tail stock. I'm going to remount the turning and then I'm going to bring it up and glue it. I've got it remounted now. I've got the ring and the cold jaws on the tail stock. I'm going to put glue on each segment and I'm going to bring it up with the tail stock and make sure that the joints between the segments are sitting right on top of one of the open segments so I get the cross grain glue up strength. So first I gotta put glue on all these segments.
I've got glue on every segment now. Now to bring the tail stuck up carefully. Get it close. And I'll line it up so that there's a joint right over each segment. And clamp her down. And now, I guarantee you, I've got a good glue joint on every one of them. So we're just going to let that dry for about 15 minutes or so. It's been a little over 15 minutes actually. I'm going to remove the cold jaws. Get the tail stack out of the way. What I'm going to do now is finish turning the inside. I'm going to turn the top ring some because when I bring up the cone with the tail stuck I don't want to have to get close to the cone so I'm going to cut the I'm going to cut the uh, top ring here and sand it then I'm going to put finish on the inside like I said, then I'm going to bring up the center cone and I'll be ready to turn the outside. Now somebody asked me what tool I am using to turn these. Now, what I'm going to use to turn this is called an Olin tool. Now why do I use an Olin tool? One, it's cheap. I can make one for under ten dollars. Two, I can sharpen it in just a few seconds. But the biggest reason is, I never get a catch with one, ever. And when I'm turning an open segment that's mounted on a piece of brown paper, I really don't want to catch after all the work I put into it. So that's basically what I'm using. I'm not removing a whole lot of wood, and this cuts plenty good. Like I said, it's cheap. This one here I'm using on the inside. I've got a ground round on the left for use on the inside. Got one for the outside that's ground the other way. So I'm just going to go ahead and do some turning and sanding and finishing. I've got the inside finish turned. I've got the top turned just a little bit just for it would be getting in the way to turn it with the cone up. So I'm going to go ahead and sand it now and I'm going to put some finish on it. I've got it sanded all the way up through all the grits and the scratch pads. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little finish on the inside. finish around the top here where it's hard to get to with the cone.
I'm going to let that dry for a bit and I'm going to rub it out with a scratch pad, the finest one, and then put another coat on it. I've rubbed it out with the, another coat on it. I'm going to let it dry for a while now before I bring the center cone up. I'm going to bring the center cone up not real tight. Just bring it up where it just holds it. Not tight at all. Then I'm going to start turning from the top towards the bottom. I turn from the top down so I can keep as much strength between me and the face plate as possible as I go. So I'm just going to let it dry for a while before I bring the cone up. And actually I'm going to put some blue tape. I've got the top taped so I can bring the cone up. Also the tape will protect it when I reverse it to do the bottom. So I'm going to bring the tail stuck up with a cone not tight not real tight at all just enough to hold it a little bring it up there we go not real tight at all I don't want any force on it a little bit tighter than that There we go, right there. I'll lock it down. That'll hold it good, but not enough to put real force on it. Now I can go ahead and turn the outside of it. So I'm going to grab my favorite tool. I'm going to start at the top, turning it to keep as much material between where I'm turning and the face plate so it keeps it strong between where I'm turning and the face plate so I'm going to start at the top and turn it the outside's been turned now I'm going to have to sand it so I'm going to go through all the grit sanding the outside I'm going to Turn on the dust control so it's going to make a lot of noise. I won't be able to record it at all. It's been turned. It's been sanded. Now I'm going to put some finish on the outside. I'm going to put a, at least two layers. Rub it down. Then put another layer on it. I'll let this dry a little bit. I'll put another layer on it, and then I'll rub it out one time and put a final layer on it. It's been turned, sanded, finish put on it, and I've got to turn the bottom. In order to turn the bottom, I've got to remove it from the face plate. If you remember, I glued it to the face plate with a piece of brown paper. So now I'm going to have to part it off. I got a tool here I sharpened a little bit, not razor sharp, just just a little bit sharp. I'm going to part this off. Once you get the paper started tearing, it comes right off.
You can see that it's ripping right off. Paper just rips off. There's what it looks like. There's still paper stuck to that. So I've got to turn the bottom. I'm going to put it on coal jaws. I'm going to put the coal jaws inside. And I'm going to be using the tapered pins. This is the tapered pins I'm going to be using to hold it. So I'm going to go ahead and mount it on the coal jaws. And I'll bring the tail stock up gently, not real hard, because I could break the bottom if I got it too tight. I've got it mounted on the coal jaws. I tighten it up, not real tight. If you get it too tight, you can split the top ring. It, clapping it from the inside. I brought the tail stock up with a live center, not the pointed center, but the screw center. I put tape over it. I got it up just firm. After all, the bottom is thin here, and you could break it out. Now all I've got to do is clean up the bottom a little bit. Then I'll put, I'll sign it and put some shellac on it. So I'm going to go ahead and just clean up the bottom.
All I've got left to do now is sand it, sign it, and seal it. I'm going to sand it up. Well, here it is finished. Uh, not as good as I'd hoped. Maybe if I'd used different woods, it'd be better, or maybe a little bit different shape. But this is it. And the open segments are 16 rows high. That'll give it two crosses. And there's a lot of variation you can do with this. Of course, different woods. You could use 32 segments per ring and make four rows each direction. Or you can use 16 segments per ring and use two rows for each direction. Of course, you can make it as tall as you want, as many crosses. Just keep repeating it. Take a look again at the pattern. This is the pattern I used here. Of course, the colors do not correspond with the woods. Now, this was made with a floating bottom, and I did a video that's on YouTube of floating bottoms, and I put it on the brown paper on a face plate so I can part it off easily. And I shown that on the video too. It's got a solid top ring, of course, and I did a video on how to make the basic segmented rings three different ways, so you can watch out if you need to. And like all segmented turnings, the glue joints are very, very important. In open segments, the glue joints are extremely important. As you can see, there's such a small area for the glue, just a small area so you need really tight joints to get a good open segment turning i uh going to put my email address along the bottom of this video if you have any questions for me or any comments are welcome and uh I really appreciate you watching the video. If you missed some of my others, you can go back and watch them, if need be. And please come back and watch the next one.